Kennedy Jones was born August the 1st, 1900, on a farm in Muhlenberg County, Kentucky. Kennedy learned to play with his thumb and fingers from his mother when he was eight years old. At age 18, he started using a thumb pick because he played square dances and his thumb got sore. Kennedy wrote some tunes that are thumb picking standards today. Saturday Night Shuffle and the famous Cannonball Rag. He died on September the 7th, 1990, at age 90. There is no question that he was the father of thumb-style guitar. Mose Reger was 11 years younger than Kennedy Jones. He was born on April the 2nd, 1911, in Old Ohio County, Kentucky. I think Mose is the one who put the blues feeling in thumb-picking. Also, I think the technique of playing two strings at once on the beat of one and two strings on the beat of two, which is the Travis sound, came from Mose Rager. Merle Travis always gave Mose and Ike Everly, father of the Everly brothers, credit for a lot of his playing. Mose and Merle had the same type of personality, always laughing and cutting up, and always ready to pick one. Mose Rager died May 14, 1986, at age 75. Merle Travis was the first person to expose to the country this style of guitar playing. Merle was born on November 17, 1917, in Muhlenberg County, Kentucky. Merle said that he would show up anywhere that Mose Rager and Ike Everly were playing, and then go home and try to play what he had heard. Without a doubt, Merle was one of the most talented people that ever lived. Besides having an enormous effect on countless guitar players, including Chet Atkins, he was a world-class songwriter. His classic 16 tons will be heard for many generations to come. He designed the first solid body guitar, which was built by the great innovator Paul Bigsby. At Merle's request, Bigsby invented the Bigsby Vibarola, which today is still the best one ever built. Merle Travis died of heart failure on October 20, 1983, at age 65. Chet Atkins was born on June 20, 1924, on a farm near Luttrell, Tennessee. Chet's father was a music teacher, and so at an early age, Chet was exposed to music. Chet had been playing a few years when at age 14, he heard Merle Travis over the radio on station WLW in Cincinnati, Ohio. Thinking that Merle used his thumb and two fingers, Chet tried to play the same type of licks that he had heard. Chet told me that he only heard Merle a couple of times. Chet went on to create his own style of playing. I think it is no exaggeration to say that Chet Atkins is the most influential guitar player of the 20th century. Chet's taste in knowing what sounds right is part of the secret to his success. Guitar player, producer, songwriter, Chet's career seems to have no limits. Although Chet and Merle appeared to be competitors to the public, they had a deep affection for each other. Chet still plays as great as ever, and the world is a better place for his being here. I would be remiss if I didn't mention a couple of other great thumb-style players who were friends of mine. Bob Barber was a great Merle Travis type player. Jerry Reed once said he was the closest thing to Merle. Another fellow was my old pal, Odell Martin, another Kentucky picker who was truly a great guitarist. I hope you've enjoyed this short history of thumb style playing. Personally, I think it's the greatest style of guitar playing ever. It is only limited by one's imagination. Thank you very much and I hope to see you on down the line. I'm sure happy to know that Paul Yandel is making a video guitar teaching tape. There's just no one around that uh, plays better and, and knows my old records uh, better than Paul. He, uh, 
I always check with him uh, when I want to remember how a tune goes that I recorded years ago. He remembers the intros, the endings, and, <laughs> and the courses I played and everything. And uh, he's a great guitar player on his own. He's uh, written a lot of tunes. We've written a lot of tunes together. And uh, I welcome him to the videotape. And uh, I'm anxious to see it myself when it's finished. And I uh, hope you enjoy it.
Hello again. Right now I thought I'd take a few minutes and show you some licks that I've learned over the years. First one I like to do is uh, one that Chet did many years ago and it's uh, still one of the best ones. It's a forward roll and I'll show you how it goes. It does this. Chet's playing up to speed, he uh, adds a little uh, lick in it at the end of it, of the lick, so it, this is what he does. Just a little variation. Another role is like, like going from G to C, and uh, it's a start with your first finger. Coming down from D down to G. That's get a lot of mileage out of that. And there's another one that uh, same technique, but the chord is different. And it, it's a D. You can do it in D, and it's like this. And uh, let's see, now, what about some Jerry Reed rolls? Jerry's is completely different than Chet's. I don't even know that Jerry can play a, a forward roll. He's done back ones so much. Most of his, his rolls are backward rolls, and he's got a little double up lick when he does it. So, um, and now by the way, uh, rolls sound a little better if you play them in a chord that's got old strings. Like that, for instance. You know. So here's Jerry's. I'll do it slower. And you can start with your first finger or your second, whichever you prefer. Another good one is sort of a backward, uh, I don't know what tempo this is, but learn it and throw it in the first time you get a chance, like this. All right, let's see, A minor is a good key for stuff like that because you got all this mess here. And you can do things like Here's a roll of mine that I like to do. I think I did it in one of the tunes on this tape, but I'll do it for you. Banjo rolls, that's, we'll do that. Jerry does a lot of banjo rolls. When you're asked to, he's written two or three instrumentals, there's nothing but banjo rolls. I'm sure everybody's familiar with it, but I'll run through it. But it might be somebody that isn't. just like a banjo player. And 
you have to do a little pull off there, you know. I'm going to do you two or three things that Jerry did on records now. I'm sure he won't mind. Uh, I know everybody knows what a great guitar player Jerry Reed is. I worked with him for about five years. And it was just like going to college. And he's uh, one of the greatest guys in the world. And uh, I was telling a friend of mine a while ago that when I worked with him, he would uh, come up with guitar licks. It was like a coffee grinder. He just ground them out every 10 seconds. Right instrumental every day. But anyway, here's a tune. Uh, I say, I believe it was uh, Are You From Dixie? Or Mule Skinner Blues. Mule Skinner Blues, I believe. He did this. did this on the intro of Mule Skinner Blues, which is really cute. He's got another thing he did. <clears throat> Let's see, what was it? I lose my train of thought. Oh, Amos Moses. A lot of people want to know how he played Amos Moses, so I'll show you that. Another one that's real good. I forget what tune that uh, he did it in, but it goes like this. This is really great. Don't think twice. Jerry did this on it. Let's see. Oh, one other thing I want to show you about the, how Merle Travis did rolls. Forgot. He used one finger and, and thumb, and it was like this. I'm not very good at that. That is really difficult. And also when he did a, uh, like Cannonball Rag, when he went to roll, he didn't, you know, he'd do this. And this is not easy either. Drag your thumb down to the, down to the third and play the third and alternate between the second and third, first. That's a good one. This is a great technique that Merle and Chet uh, really got a lot of mileage out of. First time I heard Merle do it, uh, it was on Walking the Strings. You can, he does it with a thumb and one finger. Chet does it with a thumb and two fingers. Here's the way Merle did it. I'm gonna play a chord progression. It goes from F to B flat to C back down to F. Chet's fingering. Sorry, wrong chord progression. All right. Uh, you can do it in E also. I forgot one good Jerry Reed lick. 
and everybody would hate me if I didn't show you that. It's one of his clawing licks. And, it, and it's like this. I'll share with you a few licks in E that I do. You might, uh, you might like them. Chet ending in E. Well, all right, here's a counterpoint lick that I've known for a long time. And I think those are Chet's. All right, I'd like to show you some pull-offs. Now, uh, Chet does pull-offs better than anyone. Les Paul gets a lot of mileage out of them also. Merle did them too, but Chet's the best of all of them. And it's a double pull-off technique. And it takes a lot of practice to get them clean. Uh, your fingers have to be fairly strong. If you got a little nail, it, it's better because you can snap the strings. Like banjo players, five string banjo players, they, they do that, you know. But anyway, it's like you were in G. Um, Chet would do something like. And C. Do it down the neck. That's really, you gotta have strong fingers to do that down there. Lenny Broke could do that so beautiful. He had a great, strong left hand. You really have to work on your thumb. If you're gonna be a good thumb style player, the secret's in your thumb. You can play all the notes and play fast and all that stuff, but if you don't have the feel in your thumb, you're not gonna be a good thumb style player. You need to really work at it. And uh, I taught my son, Micah, how to play, and uh, I discovered by teaching him that uh, uh, there's a way that you can explain it to people. Uh, I just played, you know, naturally, and I think Chet and Merle did too. You never thought about it. You just, your ear tells you what to play. But anyway, if you'll notice, some people will play, their thumb will sound like... There's no feeling there. It should be. If you play it stiff like strict time, like a metronome, strict eights. That's what you get. It's not, it's not very pleasing. So I hope that, uh, that will help you. If you want to play like Merle Travis, then you want to play two strings instead of one, instead of playing this, play two and two. Uh, when Chet and I play, we, we play one and two and alternate. Merle always played two and two. No matter what, if he'd make G, he'd play, he never would alternate, he'd play this.
when he played in C, he didn't play the C root, he played the G and C together. And it, his thumb had a hard driving pulse to it. So that'll get you on your way and uh, if you want to learn how to play thumbs down. And, uh, good luck. You'll have a lot of fun. And a lot of people ask me how Chet plays a galloping guitar. So I'll show you that. A lot of people play it. That's the wrong position. I learned it's this. I guess that about ends our lesson for this time. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, this has been a great experience to make this tape, and uh, I've learned a lot, and uh, I hope that I've played something that you enjoy. And uh, In this great brotherhood of guitar players, why, there's nothing quite like it. So I hope to meet all of you sometime, so take it easy and see you later. Thank you.